But now, John Daner stars in Assignment at Stone's Crossing on Have Gun, Will Travel from November 8, 1959. You men are mistaken. I'm not an executioner. But you're still going to pay me that money because I came a long way to face this ridiculous situation. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. <laughs> Miss Wong, what are you giggling about? Oh, Mr. Paladin, you look so funny playing that game. So funny. Draw him in here, let him fall, pick him up, draw him in here, let him fall. What is this game? This is not a game, Miss Wong. It's serious business. Oh, how so? Well, you see, I've had an urgent wire from a man named Jules Cleaver. He wants me to come to a place named Stone's Crossing. Never heard of it. No. Immediately. Oh, oh Mr. Farleden, why are you afraid to away your time playing games when you have urgent business? Miss Wong, it wasn't a game. The opera ball is day after tomorrow, and I'd planned on that. So I said to myself, I'll toss a coin. Heads, I'll take the job. Tails, I'll go to the ball. So? It came up heads. Yes. I take the job. And then I said, no, three out of five. Heads. Heads. Four out of seven. Heads. Heads. Five out of nine. Heads. Heads. So it looks like i better take the job. <laughs> Miss Wong. Oh. Play that game some more. It's much fun to watch. I rode into a section of Nevada territory I'd never traveled before. A stark, desolate plain, with its line to the horizon broken only by sparse, dry sagebrush. The ground was lava formed, hot and hard, and the ash-like dust that rose off it burned my eyes, closed my throat. I'd gone about five miles when my horse stumbled and fell and broke his leg. I was reminded then that when things seem bad, they can always get worse. There was nothing to do but shoulder my gear, walk back to the last water hole I'd seen and hope that help would show up. Three days passed before I heard the sound I was waiting for. You better go a little easy on that water there. Uh, now hold it, friend. There's no need to reach for that gun. Doesn't look to me as if you could lift it, let alone aim it straight. You shouldn't sneak up on a man like that. And you better let me take a look at that wound. It, it's no use, mister. All right, let me just take a look at it. Huh, rifle, huh? Lucky shot. This should have had attention. I was a, a mite short of time. Posse been trailing me for for five days. Posse? Out of Marvin. He didn't take kindly to my shooting one of their citizens. What was the trouble? No trouble. Somebody paid me $500 for killing him. Ah, hired gun. You ever hear Myron Curtis... Yes. That's me. Hey, what are you doing sitting out here by this water hole? Besides poking into people's business. My horse broke his leg out there in the desert. Uh, had to shoot him? That's right. Well, now, this work out just dandy. I'm going to make you a present of my, of my little mare there. I won't be needing her. Well, now, look, you... You 
Watch your left front hoof. She's missing a shoe. Where are you headed? Stone's Crossing. Stone's Crossing. That was going to be my next stop. Fella sent for me. Let's see, uh, Hanson. Yeah, that's it. Mike Hanson. I wonder what he's got up his sleeve. I guess, I guess I'll never know now. Curtis? I buried Myron Curtis, then mounted his mare and started once more for Stone's Crossing and my appointment with Jules Cleaver. The going was slow. It was almost nightfall when I decided to make camp and go on to the town the next morning. I was gathering firewood when I heard the two horses. They came from the direction of the setting sun. And I wasn't able to see until they were right on me that both riders held rifles pointed in my direction. Don't make one move, mister. Hey, what's the idea? Crowley? Yeah? Keep your rifle on him now while I get his gun. And now, wait a minute. We don't want no talk from you, Curtis. Curtis? Just give me that gun. <laughs> you know, I'm like this. I just don't give up. The others, they turn back, but not me. I knew I'd find you. Would it do any good for me to tell you that I am not Curtis? Not a lick. Did you ever see Curtis? Nope. We joined up when the posse organized back there in Marvin. All I had to know is that we was after a killer. Well, what makes you think that I'm that killer? Now, let me tell you something. Ed Wills don't bow to nobody, Indian or white, when it comes to tracking a man. Tell him, Crowley. That's right. Ain't nobody better than Ed. I followed your trail for too many miles out of Marvin not to recognize them tracks when we crossed them again back there. Your barefoot horse put the noose around your neck, Curtis. Now, right, Crowley, get down here and get his hands tied behind his back. We're going to take him back to Marvin, Ed? Yeah. But he'll be slung over that mare on his belly when he goes. We're going to hang him first. I sat through the night my hands and feet bound and the two rifles trained on me. Then just before sunup, we rode out in search of a tree to serve as gallows. Unfortunately, after a time, we were successful. I sat on the little mare under a spreading limb with the noose tied around my neck while the men made their preparations and I hadn't the slightest idea how to save myself. I only knew I must stall as long as possible. Hey, Ed, um... This is awful close to Stone's Crossing. There's some people don't take to this, you know. Yeah, this is the first stand of trees we come to. I know, but there's some people's awful finicky about hangings. Yeah, it won't take long now. As soon as I get this rope over. Yeah. Yeah, now. Hey, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you something. Fire away. Your time's getting short. Would it bother you to learn later that you would hang the wrong man? Yes, it would. And that's the truth. As far as I can see, you ain't the wrong man. Uh, tie off the end of the rope there, Crowley. Yeah, suppose I told you that Curtis is dead, that he gave me this horse. Well, now, just supposing you did. You hear that, Crowley? <laughs> Looky, Curtis, the way I heard it, you're a pretty slick one. You ought to be able to do better than that. Yes, I guess I'll have to. Hey, Ken, I, I can hear a horse headed this way. Yeah. Well, looks like we're ready. Stand back, Crowley, while I give this mare a whack and get her going. Wait. Yeah? I trust you are a God-fearing man. I am that. Uh, then surely you will allow me a moment to silently make my peace with my maker. Ed, can't you see he's stolen? That, uh, that horse is moving in here fast. Sure he is. Sorry, Curtis. Guess you'll have to die unrepented. Hey, give the horse a whack, Crowley. Wait a minute. Now, what is this? What's going on here? You see, uh, he was with a posse. He trailed this man from Marvin. Now, this here is Myron Curtis. He, he, he's wanted for a killing. Who? Myron Curtis, hired gun. Now, these men are mistaken, mister. My name is Paladin. Wait a minute. Let's have a look at you. Well, of course. I didn't recognize you right off with that growth of beard. It's been a long time. You know this man? Yes. And his name is Paladin. It can't be. We followed his trail from Marvin, I tell you. Look, 
All I've got to say to you two is get out of here fast before I take you into the sheriff. Let's pause here on KNX. Frank Sinatra. Although he later conquered films and television, it was radio that first made Old Blue Eyes a superstar. And now Radio Spirits has carefully remastered 60 rare episodes guest starring Frank Sinatra on programs such as Suspense, Life with Luigi, Rocky Fortune, and Burns and Allen. Hear Frank Sinatra joke, sing, and act with his friends Jack Benny, Bob Hope, Lucille Ball, Humphrey Bogart, Abbott and Costello, Bing Crosby, and many more. 30 hours and 20 cassettes all with Frank Sinatra, including a 64 page booklet with photographs and detailed histories of each of the 60 shows. No true Frank Sinatra fan should be without a rare collection like this. The 60 greatest old-time radio shows starring Frank Sinatra and friends. Order now by calling 1-800-RADIO-48. That's 1-800-723-4648 or order online at MediaBay.com. Now back to Have Gun, Will Travel here on KNX. Well, I'm a little confused. Because, of course, you've never seen me before in your life. But I'm mighty grateful. Just glad I happened along when I did, Curtis. Um, Paladin. Oh, you can drop that now. It's all right. I know you're Curtis. Oh, you do? Sure, you have to be. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Yes? I'm Mike Hanson begun to think maybe you hadn't received my message. But I can see that you ran into a little trouble getting here. I certainly didn't. Well, I have to turn off at the fork up here. I guess you want to get on into town. But maybe this is as good a time as any to bring up my proposition. Yeah, I suppose it is. When I heard about you, Curtis, I knew you were the man to do this job for me. That's why I sent for you. And the job? Yeah. A man like you, no need to beat about the bush. Curtis, Stone's Crossing is a pretty big town, and it's going to get bigger. But it's never going to be big enough to hold me and a man named Jules Cleaver. Jules Cleaver? I intend that Stone's Crossing is going to be my town. Cleaver's in my way. I'm going to lay it right on the line. I want you to get rid of him for me. I see uh, will $3,000 handle it? 3000 Um, Hanson, could we, could we do it this way? Could we let the matter rest right here for now? You'll hear from me. Sure, Curtis. I'll figure to hear from you later. I was grateful to Mike Hanson for saving my life, but I figured the explanations I owed him would have to wait. After all, Jules Cleaver was my client. I had traveled a long way to keep this assignment. I checked into the hotel at Stone's Crossing and called at Cleaver's home that afternoon. Mr. Cleaver? Yes? Your servant told me I'd find you here in your study. I'm Paladin, Mr. Cleaver. Paladin? Oh, where have you been? I've been expecting you for days. Well, I ran into a few delays. I got into town this morning, but there are a few things I'd take care of, like a bath, a shave, a decent meal... So, uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Cleaver? (laughs) Ah, that's what I like. You're a businessman. I'm a businessman. Let's not waste time. Let's get right to the point. Sit down, Paladin. All right. Well, Paladin, a businessman, or anyone for that matter, striving for success or certain attainments, finds, as a matter of course, obstacles along the way. If he intends to forge ahead... The obstacles must be removed, right? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Now, I'm a determined man. Oh? At the moment, there's an obstacle in my path. A man named Mike Hanson. Yes? And I'm going to lay it right on the line. I want you to get rid of him for me. How about, uh, well, $3,000 for the job? Three thousand. Well, I've come a long way for this meeting, Mr. Cleaver. Yeah. It's been uncomfortable and miserable. I was nearly hanged in the bargain, but I'm afraid I've arrived here to find that there's... there's been a misunderstanding. What do you mean? 
I am not an executioner, Mr. Cleaver. Huh? Your gun is for hire, isn't it? Well, my... Look, suppose we let the deal remain right here for the moment. I'll get in touch with you. Well, all right. I had been surprised to find Stone's Crossing the prosperous town that it was. Then, as I rode back to my hotel, I took note of the fact that all the places of business seemed to be owned and controlled by either M. Hansen or J.J. Cleaver. It appeared that I was involved with the two leading citizens. That afternoon, I gave the matter careful consideration. Then I sent messages to the two gentlemen. Oh, hello, Hanson. Come in. I uh, got your message. Hey, you're right on time. You want a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I don't have much time. Well, did you decide to accept my offer, Curtis? Uh, Hanson, I am not Myron Curtis. He is dead. Dead? Yes. And my name is Paladin. Well, excuse me. Hello, Cleaver. Cleaver, Come in. Hanson. Paladin, now, what's, what's the meaning of this? What's going on here? Now, you'll find out, both of you. Sit down. I still want to... And be quiet. Gentlemen, I asked you to meet with me here in my hotel because I feel that we're involved in a situation that requires further discussion. Now, this morning, Mr. Hanson, you made me an offer of $3,000 to kill Mr. Cleaver. What? And you, Mr. Cleaver, early this afternoon, made me an offer of $3,000 to kill Mr. Hanson. Well, now, Why, look here. Cleaver, Why, you... No. You both can see what this means, can't you? This means that I would have $6,000 and you would both be dead. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Now you sit down. I'm going to give you a chance to reconsider. This is my offer. I'm going to lay it on the line, a phrase you gentlemen are so fond of. You will each pay me $3,000 and I will see that you both stay alive. No, what you're kind nothing of but a cheap gunslinger, Paladin. And you're going to pay me that money, too, because I came a long ways to face this ridiculous situation. And I brought you together here today so you could learn just how stupid you are. Now, I am not a killer. But you, Cleaver, didn't know that when you hired me for this job. You thought you'd bought yourself an executioner. Well, how come and the you man you hired, Hanson... Never managed to make it this far. He died before you could make a deal with him. So, through circumstance, you gentlemen have another chance. Paladin. There's room in Stone's Crossing for both of you. May I suggest that you try to share the town in peace? Each of you, in attempting to destroy the other, just might find yourself destroyed. Now, gentlemen, shall we have a drink? <laughs> Mr. Paladin, so nice to have you home again. Thank you, hey boy. Uh, Miss Wong have surprise for you. Oh, what she been up to now? You wait, you see. You go in, Mr. Paladin. Well, now. Well, what's all this? <laughs> Very fancy, huh? Oh, Miss Wong, so sorry you can't go to Opera Ball. When she clean rooms in hotel, she save all party favors. Decorate for you. <laughs> well, I'm overwhelmed. Look at that. Paper hats, balloons, streamers. Oh, this is festive. I tell you what, hey boy. Tonight, we'll order up some champagne. And you and Miss Wong and I will have our own ball. Oh, it's uh, very nice. Hey, Miss Paladin, you have a very angry red scar on your neck. What is that? Um, it's a rope burn, hey boy. A rope burn? Yes. It's to remind me the next time I travel in Nevada Territory to be sure to bypass a place called Stone's Crossing. Gun Will Trouble. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong.